Welcome to episode 3 of module 5 heredity. We're finishing up of inquiry question 2 looking at how important genetic material needs to be replicated exactly. A syllabus reference for this video will model the processes involved in cell replication including but not limited to mitosis and meiosis. Our learning intentions for this video we will identify the structure of a chromosome, describe the process of mitosis and describe the process of meiosis. So let's first look at the structure of chromosomes. Chromosomes are thread-like structures found in the nucleus of the cell. They are made up of DNA and proteins called histones that carry the genetic information necessary for all living organisms to grow, develop, function and reproduce. The number of chromosomes in an organism is also species specific. For example, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, while a fruit fly, for example, has four pairs of chromosomes. Sister chromatids are identical copies of a single chromosome, and they are connected by a centromere. So let's first look at our cell replication process of mitosis. So this is a type of cell replication involved in the growth and repair of cells. The cell division results in two identical daughter cells referred to as diploid, meaning they have two complete sets of chromosomes, 2N. In mitosis, cell division involves several stages. The first stage is called interphase, and this is when the cell grows and replicates its DNA. The next stage is called prophase. I like to call this stage the prepare phase. In this stage, the DNA and proteins referred to as chromatin condense to form chromosomes and the nuclear membrane begins to break down. A spindle fiber forms which extends from the centromeres which are located at the opposite poles of the cell. Our next stage in mitosis is metaphase. I call this the meet in the middle stage. This is because the spindle fibers will attach to the centromeres on the chromosomes and will align and meet in the middle called the metaphase plate. Phase is our next stage, and I call this the away stage. In this stage, the spindle fibres pull the chromosomes apart into sister chromosids to opposite poles of the cell. Telophase, or the two cell stage. The sister chromatids are now separate chromosomes, and a new nuclear envelope forms around each set of chromosomes, creating two distinct nuclei. The last stage is called cytokinesis and this is when the cytoplasm divides, resulting in two identical daughter cells, referred to as diploid, with each cell containing 46 chromosomes. Meiosis is a type of cell replication involved in the development of reproductive cells. Cell division results in four non-identical daughter cells, referred to as haploid, meaning half the number of complete sets of chromosomes, N. Meiosis has some similarities to mitosis, However, there are a few key differences. In meiosis, there are two stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. In prophase 1, the chromatin condenses to form chromosomes, just like in mitosis. However, homologous chromosomes are chromosomes from each parent. They're of the same size and shape that carry the same genetic material, will pair up with each other and exchange genetic material in a process called crossing over. This creates new allele combinations and leads to genetic variation in a species. In metaphase 2, the chromosomes align independently of one another in a process called independent assortment. The random orientation of chromosome pairs leads to different combinations of maternal and paternal chromosomes in the sex cells. Independent assortment is another way genetic variation can occur. In anaphase 1, the whole chromosomes are pulled apart by the spindle fibres to opposite poles. In telophase 1, the nuclear membrane forms around the chromosomes. Cytokinesis will occur where the cytoplasm splits, resulting in two cells. The two cells that formed from meiosis 1 will now begin meiosis 2, starting with prophase 2. There is no crossing over in prophase 2, and meiosis 2 is very similar to mitosis. In metaphase 2, the chromosomes will line at the metaphase plate. Unlike in metaphase 1, independent assortment does not occur. 
In anaphase 2, the spindle fibres will separate the chromosomes into chromatids. This is where a process called random segregation will occur. This is when sister chromatids will randomly distribute into the daughter cells. This process is another way genetic variation can occur. And lastly, in telophase 2, cytokinesis, the chromatids will decondense and the cytoplasm divides, resulting in four non-identical daughter cells, each carrying half the number of chromosomes as the parent. Crossing over, independent assortment and random segregation contribute to the genetic variation seen in sexually reproducing populations. It is fundamental in producing genetically unique sperm or egg cells. And that is the end of episode three. Thank you for watching.